recording off when we get to Q&A for your privacy and also because that's an exclusive benefit to everybody who hung out and stayed. So I am, those people who are here in person get the benefit of asking questions and even super lengthy ones at the end. Plus, I will hang a little bit afterwards to talk about um, you know, how you can search for things on YouTube and see what's trending, um, talk about any, you know, any of your questions that you have, any details that you want to share. That's why I do turn off the video so you can share those and feel comfortable doing that. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how you can use YouTube to grow your business. And so glad that you found the question box, Mary Beth. No worries, Muskogee, Oklahoma. Glad I know GoTo is a is a different bird, right? So thank you for learning the new platform and being here. We've got Mark 79% humidity in Houston. You're less than Midland. Okay, I'm going there then. Mark, I'm I'm with you on it. 70% is much better than what we're in in Midland right now. So thank you everybody for being here. Let's talk about how you can use YouTube to grow your business. Let's make sure I'm on the right screen here. Now we know people go to YouTube. I mean, yes, we know video is hot. I mean, think about what everything happened during the start of COVID. We were all watching TikTok like crazy and TikTok shot up. I mean, just people using short form video, but we'd seen it before in Facebook groups and Facebook lives. Then we went to Instagram reels or Instagram videos and Instagram TV, if you remember back when, and now it's Instagram reels and Instagram stories and there's Instagram lives. And now there's YouTube Shorts, which is the shorter form of YouTube, which is actually given favor with the algorithm. So we know people use YouTube. In fact, it's a wide open blue ocean because only 9%, only 9% of small businesses or any businesses, so only 9% of businesses have a YouTube strategy. So if you'd like to elevate yourself above all the masses and above your competitors, You'll think about after today crafting a YouTube strategy, and I'm going to help you out with that. People look and find information in YouTube. They have the opportunity to see you, and it's a chance for you to build rapport. Understand trust building and rapport building and credibility are all the foundation that's needed for somebody to begin knowing, liking, and trusting you. And we will step over dollars and businesses to do business with people we know, like, and trust, even if that's built by video. So you'll see people feel engaged also in YouTube. A lot of times I'll go through and I'll use user-generated content that they put on TikTok or on Instagram where I've gotten permission to use that and repost that into YouTube because you can repurpose this and make sure you get all eyeballs. So not everybody's on TikTok. Not everybody's using Meta, Instagram, or Facebook. And we know, or LinkedIn's new one is Jump Rope is gonna be coming out there, short, room, or short form video. But we know that people search online and Google search is the number one search engine. YouTube is the number two search engine. And both are owned by Google. And both results show up in a Google search. So why not repurpose it? Because you do need to get and be visible to people where they're looking, not where you think they need to look, because that takes a tremendous amount of time, energy, and money to get them to come there. So first, we're going to talk about creating your YouTube channel. Now, how many of you have a YouTube channel? If you do, let me know in the question box. If you'd like to drop a link there, I'm making a note right here at this timestamp that, let me see that I will save those so I can go look at your sites afterwards. I don't want to do that now because we won't be on time and I will end on time if not beforehand. I'll be very respectful of your time, but as long as somebody's asking questions, I'll hang here. And then afterwards, I'll go look at your YouTube channel. So I'd love to know, just drop your YouTube channel URL right there in the question box and I'll have that because I time stamped it here. Not used, that's okay, Renee, drop it in there because this will be a good before and after, right? So we'll talk about creating your YouTube channel. I won't spend a lot of time on that because it seems like it has one, but videos are not uploaded yet. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about, I'll highlight the best practices of creating a YouTube channel unless you let me know in the question box that you do want me to go step-by-step step through that. Let me know. I'll also talk about adding videos to your channel and how to optimize those, how to promote your business with video ads. So I'm gonna do that just a little bit, but I'm gonna to talk to you about what some of the free functions are, because you know me, if you've ever been with a webinar with me, I'm all about free or small fee. I'm a bootstrap marketer, and I understand the importance of cash flow right away for a small business, and I want you to get that first before you start spending. And then, of course, recap and resources, it's all about the free tools, okay? That's what I love to talk about. Uh, perfect. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for, ta Tammy, thanks for dropping that too. 
um, would like step by step. Absolutely, Laurie, I will do that. All right, so let's go through. It'll be good for everybody who does have a channel to watch the step by step, just because if there's anything there that could be preventing anybody from finding you or the search engine delivering you in search results, you'd like to see that first. So we're just going to do a quick engine check on that as I walk people who've not been through and created their channel through it. Okay, deal, everybody. All right, so first in creating your YouTube channel, this is 100% free and you can create it with your personal free Gmail account, free Google account, a paid account, but you don't need a paid account. You can use your free personal Gmail account if you want, but you'll go to youtube.com. So you see the URL right here and you're going to sign into YouTube with your Google account. If you're already logged into your Gmail account or Google account, you'll just click sign in. It'll refresh. It'll see your credentials and it'll bring you right in. Okay. Once you do that, now to create a channel, what you'll do is you'll click right up here at the very, very top icon. So it looks like a usually a, an initial here, unless you've put a photo, but it's the top right hand. There's an icon. You see it here named GWG, Grow with Google Demo. And you click on that and you're given the opportunity to create a channel. And just like any other Google tool in Google style, you have more than one opportunity to do that. You can do that here or right here. When you first log in, it's going to give you the opportunity to create a channel. Okay. Oh, love everybody. Pam with New Mexico out. Sorry. No worries, Pam. Glad, grateful that you're here and that you're a partner with us. All right. Okay, I see everybody's putting in their YouTube channel URL. Thank you. Feel free to do that too, Pam. I'd love to see your channel. I made a little note here to save these little comments from this timestamp. All right. So when you create a channel, you'll click on that, and now you're given the opportunity to customize that channel. This is very important because branding, branding 101 is about consistency. When people consistently, consistently see your logo, your colors, your font, your photographs that are really there helping establish the brand, your brand consistency, that gives you brand equity and people recognize it right away. There's a reason we understand and we know when we're headed down the road, we see those golden arches, we know what that means. It's about branding. And a lot of times we get bored with our branding and our colors and our fonts before anybody even sees them. It's important to be consistent. This builds trust too. So what does it look like on your channel compared to your social profiles? What do they look like? What's on your website? What's on your blog post? What's on your LinkedIn business profile? What is everywhere to, to be able to emulate and show that consistency across all channels? So you do want to customize your channel. Then you're, of course, given the opportunity to upload videos. So as you customize your channel, you will go to YouTube Studio. That's more than just your channel. You'll see it in the drop down here when you click on that little icon, that little um, initials right there at the top right hand corner. You will click there and you'll go to, instead of just channel, you'll go to YouTube Studio. That's where all the goods are and the free stuff to be able to make stuff that you need to in YouTube, okay? Of course, you're given that opportunity here too. As you're setting up a channel, you'll see that you can continue. When you continue, you go to layout first. Now this is key for those of you who have already created your channel, keep this in mind. Are you, do you have a trailer video and do you have a featured video? Let me know if you're using both video functions in the question box. Let's see, I've got Beth with Blue Dog Engineering here. Thank you, Beth, you're good, we're all good to go. And I haven't started a business yet, but we found out about the classes from Choctaw. I'm so glad the Choctaw Nation, they're so amazing. And I do miss, because I know Greg is moved. I mean, he's still with the Choctaw Nation, but he's in another position. And I'd love to connect with who I need to there because I it's been, well, it's been years since I've been back there only because I was there right before everything locked down. All right, Mark, you're in Choctaw also. Oh, wonderful, Mark. I thought, I thought you were in Houston, but you were just good at Googling, right? <laughs> All right. Everybody, so you can customize your channel. How many are using the channel trailer and the featured video? Both of them, two. Okay. So your channel trailer, for those of you new to, to YouTube, you do want to use this. This is just like it sounds. It's a trailer, like a movie trailer. This is enticing, enticing them. This is getting them to come in, getting them to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. You want them to do that. So this is your chance now to let them know 
what is the benefit, what's the value of subscribing to your channel. This again is just that, a trailer. Use this to entice everybody who's not subscribed. Now once people subscribe, they are no longer going to see the channel trailer, they will see the featured video trailer if you have a featured video. So that's why it's important to use two. The functions are different. One is to entice people, the other is now for people who are in that inner circle who've decided to subscribe. So let's say I've subscribed, so now my featured video will be out there for people who've subscribed to my channel is, thank you for subscribing, I'm excited that you're here, I, you'll get this, 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 ABC, and we're gonna do this. And you can change these out as many times as you see fit, but do utilize both, that gets you the most exposure too. You also have both of those descriptions to write out, which helps give you more visibility and relevancy to the search engine when people are searching for your product, service, or solution. You will also see featured sections here. So these featured sections understand that those are ways you can customize your channel to really be organized and much easier and a much better user experience for somebody who wants to know your information and see your videos. By default, YouTube is set up that it's just going to be the latest upload. You don't want to do that because that shows somebody who just has an online presence who doesn't care. They're just throwing stuff online. You want to show that you're organized, you are a business that really takes your reputation solidly and you want to give people who are doing business with you or considering it the best experience, okay? So as you look at this, oh, you're in Houston, but you're talking, okay, I got it. I'm with you, Mark. That's how you knew. Thank you. And you're familiar, I wasn't familiar with the feature. Yeah, Katrina. So definitely use the two of those because those two really can help you with your optimizing and being seen plus the user experience. It really gives them a nice opportunity to know a little bit more if they're on the fence about committing to being a subscriber. Now in branding, remember you want to use a profile photo because so it could be your logo. It could be a photo of you. If it is a photo of you, look at your social profiles. Are you using the same photo so you'll recognize right away? Then of course the banner image, remember that YouTube looks good on any device. In fact, a lot of devices already come with YouTube preloaded on there, but you wanna consider that you need that banner size because it could be a laptop, a desktop, a smart TV that they're coming in on. And then of course tablet size, and then it could be your mobile device, okay? So mobile, just keep that, look at that and follow the dimensions there so it looks good across any device. Now some of the basic information that you put here is what is somebody going to get out of being with your channel? What do you actually provide? But I want you to pause here for a minute and think about the words people use because YouTube is owned by Google. Both run under Google's algorithm, that secret sauce that we have that discovers and actually comes up with what shows up on the first page of Google search. And YouTube search works just the same as Google search. But what's so cool is in Google search, YouTube results also show up. So you get bang for your buck, two bang, you know, two birds in one, one throw right there. You get YouTube search and you get Google search. So think about that for a minute. What are the words people use? Don't put words in their mouth because then you won't show up when they're searching. If you're using their words, use their words and now describe exactly what you provide and how you help people. You can also put a link to your your YouTube channel and you can customize that after you have so many people subscribe and you've been in experience so you've been a, an account around for a while you can customize that so you have a hundred people subscribe and you can customize your channel and you can also put contact information because some people never go to Google search and they just search directly on YouTube okay we see that in maps they search a certain way in search they certain search a certain way and in YouTube they search a certain way so look at this customized channel here for DIY creators. You see the banner image? This photo of him with the hat is the same across all of his socials, all of his profiles. He's making sure that consistency is there, building that level of trust and awareness. Visibility is important. You see it in his profile picture, and then he is using a video spotlight. So this is not the trailer. This is a spotlight that shows up after they've subscribed. It's okay to use a featured video that says, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I'm excited that you're here. I value your time. So you can say all those things in your video spotlight because you can update that as many times as you see fit. 
Now, here's something that you may not be doing with your channel, and that is organizing your channel. Remember what I said, by default, it's just the latest upload. So it just looks messy, <clears throat> but here it looks organized. Playlists actually are not for your own personal playlists to keep track of your favorites. You can't have a playlist like that that's not open or seen to the public. But these playlists are playlists of topics or subjects about your business. So it could be, in this case, he does DIY build and furniture. He's actually walking through how that's done and what actually is involved with that. Same thing with concrete, how they utilize that tool or how you can utilize that tool. Now here's where you need to look at your video actual size, the length of your video. We all have, since the whole lockdown, become very focused on thinking episodically, right? How many of us were in Netflix through March 2020? It felt like on for a while. And because of Netflix, we know about episodes. So we're not wanting to watch a 26 minute video to get to that last 14 minute spot where we want to hear something. We want things broken up. It's just the same thing if you are watching Game of Thrones or House of Dragon and something amazing happened in season one, episode eight. We don't want to watch all of season one just to see that amazing or share that with people. If you cut that down into episodes or chapters, of your video, what's nice, it makes it more consumable and also more shareable. If somebody wants to share you with their contact sphere, which is a great way to come in with some credibility. So think about grouping into sections and putting playlists together. This looks like bookshelves, really under your trailer video and under your featured video, which is really nice, making it easy for people to search, plus making it easy for the search engine to search. Because look at the names there. You can customize the names of each playlist. Now imagine if you were using names of the playlist or you named your playlist by what is a currently trending around your, your, your industry or your competitor even to get some of those eyeballs looking your way. How nice would that be to show up higher in the search engine just by using and naming a playlist? <clears throat> so now how can you create and add videos to your channel? Well, what you'll do is you need to make a decision. What kind of videos do you want on your channel? Okay, this is important. Do you really want the high production one because maybe you're an employer brand and you're working with um, more professional administrative type corporations, maybe you're B2B and you definitely wanna give that produced and very um, streamlined kind of video. But understand we have an entire video studio here. We have instant and immediate, and there's a lot of value in being transparent and authentic. People appreciate when they can be in that inner circle and they have a chance to see something in the raw, in the real, in the wild. So do know that you have everything that you need here, but you need to make a decision on what's the technology you're going to use and how you're gonna produce your video. The next decision you need to make after technology is what is it that you want to tell, okay? What is that purpose of the video? What does success in that video look like, sound like, and feel like? At the end of the day, how do you know that video performed? And who's the star of the video? Is it you? Is it a team member? Is it a customer? Is it the product? Who is the star of that video? I've seen and worked with lots of businesses who think it's the owner who's the star of the video, and they find out later, it's the product that's the star of the video, okay? Because people wanted to know more about the product. They wanted to see uh, some, some real testimonials and reviews, so user-generated content, UGC. They wanted an unboxing, four out of five videos that are actually watched on YouTube are unboxing videos because people don't wanna make a mistake in their purchase. They wanna see exactly what they're getting there too. Is there a guide on how to create different sections? Um, there isn't, Mark, but I can walk you through that at the end if you want me to, okay? So I can walk you through that when we go to Q&A because that's a little bit, it's not lengthy, lengthy, but I don't want it to make anybody late because I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. Absolutely, Mark, happy to do that. So who's the star of your video, right? So for example, your business story could be about who you are, who your team is, what you do, why you do. But often when I'm working with people, the first story that they like to tell on YouTube is their own hero story. So what's the hero journey? It's a real easy one and I'm gonna give it to you right now. The hero journey is really one about telling your story, how you help people in a very succinct way. So for example, 
let's say that I'm an insurance agent and I'm going to tell you, hi, my name is Maria Elena Duran, Maria Elena. You can reach me at 555-1212. I'm a property and casualty insurance agent. I can insure your home, your living space, where you vacation, your vehicles, and be sure that everything is taken care of and covered. If you need any of that help or anything, actually assess, just give me a call, Maria Elena Duran, 555-1212. That's a lot of times what I see people putting on YouTube. That's their business story. I see it even on TikTok. Not very well um, received, but I see it because TikTok is definitely not where you put commercial stuff. So let's take that same time frame and switch it to a business hero story. And that is, hi, my name is Maria Lena Duran. When I was eight years old, my father was an insurance agent and we had a knock on the door at dinner time. It was a family who came over to thank my father for being their agent and assessing all of their property because their house had burned down. And they were so grateful not to lose life, but also grateful that dad made sure that they didn't have to stress and worry about all of that with everything else they were dealing with. It was at that moment that I decided I wanted to be an insurance agent and make that kind of difference in people's lives at those moments when they're most stressed. My name is Maria Lenadron, 555-1212. Which one compels you more? Where did you get more feeling? You see, while facts may tell, stories sell. At the end of the day, when our kiddos are asking for more games, more play in this, if we give them the option of, hey, do you want to hear this or do you want to read this story? They always want stories. We're built on stories. We humans with emotions really love to hear that journey. And I just took you through a hero's journey is what I did in a really short form basis. So what I did is I used the five-year-old story structure. Once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. Again, that's once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. What I did is I just didn't say those out loud. Once upon a time, I was eight years old and my father was an insurance agent. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Luckily, dad had taken care of this family and already assessed all their needs and covered them. Happily ever after, I too became an insurance agent because that is my calling, is to help people when they need the most help. Once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. If you can use that to put your story together, I have trained and worked with thousands of insurance agents and hundreds of different professionals on how they can tell their hero story using those four words but not saying them out loud because number one it drops somebody right into a story as adults when we say the words i'm going to tell a story we immediately switch off if so we hear somebody say that i'm going to tell a story oh my gosh we turn off it's like somebody showing their picture album from vacation that you're not interested in we don't want to hear it so you've got to drive, drop them right into the action i was eight years old and my father was an insurance agent drop them right in and what suddenly happened? What was it? What's that turning point of the story that really are the problem in the story? And then how was that fixed? Luckily, that's where you get into the luckily and happily ever after. How do you make their lives happily ever after? Because understand the story is never ever about you. It's about how they see themselves in that story. So for your business story or your hero journey, does that help you a little bit? Let me know in the question box. I'd love to know. If that's helpful to you. There's also a product or service story that you can do. That is about 15 to 30 seconds and it really explains the benefit of the product. So you're showing off, okay, this is the product. It's a wonderful cold um, cold drink container. Uh, it can you know, insulate, you keep your, your water cold for at least four hours or 14 hours. You really go into those benefits and talk about what it is people need, but you're showcasing the product. The product then is the star of the story. And the last is the promotional. This is really something about deals or special event or come right now or we're having a webinar. Again, this is meant to just get the word out. So those are three different types of stories you can use. Perfect. I'm glad it was helpful, Renee. So as you think about that, think about when you do a video, who's the star of the video? What does success look like, sound like, and feel like for that video? So how are you going to measure that's successful? And how do you want people to feel after they see your video? Do you want them to be energized, excited, empowered, or scared and fearful and cautious and concerned or angry and ready to move forward? 
What is it that you want them to feel? Know all of those things and make those decisions before you ever get on camera so you're not wasting your time doing five million takes because you will have a really clear path on what this video is supposed to do. You'll have a clear, concise message. You'll be able to come in strong the first five to 15 seconds with a really good impression because that's about all we have. A lot of times people will look at their videos and look at their video views and they think that the three second video view means anything. It doesn't. A lot of times our fingers just smash something before we intended it to we never meant to watch it so it's not a real view but if somebody's viewed for 10 seconds that's a real commitment and that means people have an interest in your topic and then what's the compelling call to action afterwards do you have a call to action? Because understand we're all busy people. You could be running right along, watching your video thinking, that's it, I got it, I'm gonna have to do this. And then all of a sudden a text comes in from my son and it's like, pick me up here and I'm in another world. I completely forget it. But if you've got a call to action saying, call now, download this, leave your name here in the email, get ready for this webinar that'll happen in four hours, book your time, whatever your call to action is, that will help them know where they left off and where they can jump on to the next action that will get them what they want. Make sense to everybody? Perfect, Christy, I'm glad it's helpful. Glad, 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 thank you for the feedback. So common production techniques, you could do a selfie. You know, we all know that. I'm terrible at them too, right? That's, you could use a backdrop. There's a reason here, I am, all of us with the Google training team, we're still very home-based, very remote, even though I am doing a little bit of traveling. So they do want us to keep our, our background on. That's why you don't see me faded out. It's to show you that I really, really am in my home office. You could do a voiceover. So that means you're showing the video, but now we're voicing it over. So what's nice is you can even do those on Instagram and download those and then use those for YouTube okay you can do top down so that's looking top down just looking down at something let's say you're giving that point of view perspective of looking at something on a flat surface or a desk or on the ground you can point and shoot or you can do an action shot you can also put and tell with text so it can be text over a photo or a video and you can do some animation. You guys might know this icon pretty well from Instagram because that's how you can get some of those little, um, the little graphics, the little sparkles or the big eyes. But you can also for yourself do some animation and some GIFs even within your actual video. So tips here at the bottom left-hand corner, I'll move my little laser pointer there out of the way if you wanna take a screenshot because you will get this slide deck tomorrow. It takes about 24 hours for the video to render. And if you do want a copy, just let me know in the question box right now. Sorry, I just realized it's 36 minutes in. I missed the 20 minutes, so let's do it now. I'm going to make a timestamp note that anybody who comments now, you do not have to put your email address. It will send it to the email that you registered with, but just let me know that you'd like a copy and we'll get those to you tomorrow, right? The system will get that to you. So you have all of that available to you. So when you're shooting, look at your space, look at behind you. You know, we've all been on Zoom or Google to Meet, join me. We've on, been on enough now um, videos um, FaceTime, Duo, however you're on video and seeing something that we can't unsee in the background. It could be a spouse, significant other walking in when you didn't expect it, children running around pantless in the background, or that unmade bed that you didn't think was in the shot. Just look behind you and remember the angle of the camera. Then also look at lighting. I happen to be in the corner of my office, so the window's way over there. There's no way I'm getting any today's light, and there's no today light anyway with the humidity so, um, and the raininess. So I have to use two loom cubes that I actually have here that are pointing at me to make sure that I get a little bit of brightness here. The good thing when you're using Zoom is nice is that you can lighten that up, and Google actually started that function now with, Go to, with uh, Google Meet. So it's kind of cool to use those things. But sound. Sound is the one that's super important. We will be very forgiving of the goofiness in the behind us space and also our lighting if we're dark shadows, but we will not be forgiving about sound. So for example, if I was out in West Texas today and I didn't have a microphone on, all you would hear is whoosh, that's it. Or it could be a ceiling fan, click, 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 click. Really listen to your surroundings of what is going on around you and make sure you're giving the person watching the best experience because if the sound is not good, it's cut, your audio is coming in and out because you keep moving away from the microphone and you don't have one external mic to your pin to you, they're going to leave. They're not going to have any patience for that. So be sure to look at all of these, but sound's the most important of the three. And then, of course, we know about trending 
right? Trending sounds. If you ever go to talkboard.com, I like to go to talkboard to see what's trending on TikTok. So you can see that there. But what's nice in YouTube is you can go to YouTube's audio library when you're in YouTube studio and you can use any of these sounds for free. They're royalty free. So nice. So you don't have to worry about any copyright dings or anything to delay you uploading a video in case you need to change it out because you might have been using a trending sound from TikTok on your TikTok on your Instagram reel but you know you can't download those right you can't download those from Instagram and so now if you try to use that here you might get a copyright ding and that'll slow down or they'll ask you to redo your video with other audio you now have an audio library that you can pull from right here 100% free so when you add videos to your channel, remember what I said, you can go to create up here and you'll see the opportunity to upload videos or you can select files here. So once you click on that, that'll come up here or it may already present itself depending on as you're going through the process because it's pretty intuitive. And now you're going to put detail here. You'll put the title of your video. Remember, think in terms of the words that people use and what is the benefit that you provide them. It's not, hey, I'm going to show you the five things about this wonderful mug it could be uh, have you have you ever had a long day and just wanted a cold drink right at your fingertips you have it right here okay so I'm talking more in the benefit language what's in it for me imagine that everybody listening has WIIFM tattooed on their head and you've got to answer that question that's our job our heavy lifting as business owners is we need to connect the dots between what we have and how that helps somebody and you can also put that in your description do you remember, do you, I'm sorry, <clears throat> do you recommend, try to say that too quickly, uh, Mark, landscape or portrait? Portrait is what I recommend. Now, landscape when you're on YouTube, yes, unless you're using YouTube Shorts, which are portrait. YouTube Shorts actually is meant to um, be an answer to TikTok and Instagram Reels. What I like is you can repurpose all of those, but it is portrait, okay? So do keep that in mind. But what's nice is when you have portrait, you can easily make that horizontal. Um, what you'll do is when you put that in there, you'll just you know have it put in a background. It'll actually automatically do it. So it'll look like a faded background with the portrait in the middle, that, that video actually going. So that'll automatically do that. But you can put your description here. Let me give you an expert tip, okay? Now you can use timestamps in here and let YouTube do that automatically. But here's a little SEO tip, search engine optimization tip. I actually put three, minimum of three timestamps within my description and I manually put that in. I don't rely on YouTube to do that. Zero colon zero zero is always the title of the actual video because I want it to show up more in search. I want it to really show that this information is here in this video. Now I might put a second one in at maybe 12 minutes or two minutes, two minutes, two dot o or dot o one, and call out one specific thing that I know people are looking for. How to make sure your YouTube channel shows up number one in search. How to get to the first 1,000 subscribers in your YouTube channel. Okay, maybe that's it. And then the third timestamp could be at five minutes or at four minutes and 20 seconds. Then I'm going to say. Um, Three steps to be able to set up your channel for subscribers and customize and to customize your YouTube channel. Okay, those again are not generated by YouTube. I manually enter those in as best practice with search engine optimization to give my video every opportunity to show up in search as much as it does. Okay, you wonder sometimes why you see some videos they upload in seconds and all of a sudden they've got a thousand people watching and you're wondering it's only been like two seconds since that happened. It has a lot to do with who actually your subscriber base is already, what you put in as far as the content in there and what you put in as far as the description will determine whether YouTube pushes it out to as many people as possible. And then of course the thumbnail, you have that opportunity and understand a lot of people make decisions just on the thumbnail. If it's too small, they can't read it. So it means nothing to them. If it's spammy, you know, you put something out there that looks spammy um, and it takes them, you know, you say, hey, let's look at apple recipes. And then you're talking about how to grow apples. They're not going to like your channel either. And you'll lose viewership and Google and YouTube will actually deprecate where you show up in Google search because it's showing that it's not a good experience for people. So you want people to have a good experience too with your channel. Put a good thumbnail there. And sometimes goofy photo ones do work because people like that break of, you know, just the re regular text overlay. They want to see something different. 
Now, what happens next when you've uploaded is you can add subtitles. So you can have it add subtitles. You can add a screen, an end screen. Oh, let me go back to subtitles. Sometimes you want to do this because people don't, in fact, 64% of us don't have sound on, on our phones. Remember, we go here first when we want to look at something and we don't have sound on. So when somebody's just moving in their mouth, we have no idea. But if we can see the subtitles or their call outs about what's happening, that's what entices us in. Just look at some of the TikToks and Reels and YouTube shorts and get a good idea of what's actually getting people to pay attention. You'll see that those kind of practices in play. And then you'll also see you have the opportunity to put an end screen. What do you want them to do at the end? Subscribe, listen more, look at this other video. I always like to the end screen to take them to another video within my channel. So I keep them in my channel as opposed to it giving options and recommendations for other channels like mine, because sometimes they're random. And then of course cards, you can put cards within the video to say, hey, this is downloadable on our site, or hey, there's this blog post here, or look for the link in my Instagram profile. So you could put all of that there, which really are calls to action for people to do during the video. Now you will see you go through a video check is what happens next. Copyright is the first thing that you could get dinged for, so it'll check that off. It might be right away, depending on the size of your video. If it's a little bit lengthier, it could take a little bit of time and they'll message you um, if there's any issues. Once you go from here, you can see the status then. Once you're approved, now you go, can go to the next, or you can go to the next and wait to get an email for the approval so it doesn't have to hold you up there. You now decide on visibility. Do you want it to publish right away or do you want to make it private? Now, when you make a video private, that means somebody has to be logged into the email address that you made it private to. So, for example, if I was sending it to my mom and my mom was mom Maria at gmail.com, mom would have to be in that Gmail address. Now understand that my mom loves to subscribe to a lot of channels, so I'm going to tell on her a little bit, but she never knows what Google account she was in when she subscribed. That's the blessing and the curse with Google accounts. They're easy to start up. So she has about four Gmail accounts. And so now I get the call because she thinks I'm tech support of, I don't know what's happening. It won't let me in this video. And I know it's a private video and she's not opened it in the right Google account. So do understand that if it is private, they will have to be in that right Google account and it will be only to the email addresses that you list can have access to this. Now you can keep it unpublished. And I like to do this because that URL that the unpublished video come up with is a lot of gibberish it's really long not something somebody would easily discover or create and now I can send a video like to you all that won't show up on my channel but still is more private meaning unpublished but it's not private that I have to put each of your email addresses in there okay and then you can also schedule it so let's say you've committed to everybody Friday mornings at 10 o'clock central time that's when you post that's when you would schedule it then so you could create it any other time in the week or even ahead of time but now you'll schedule and show it then. Once it's published, you have the opportunity right here to get a link for whatever tool it is you need. It's already formatted for that, so you can use that, or you can even use it in your email marketing. And then of course you've heard me talk about shorts. So let me talk about those for just a moment because they are given favor in Google's alg algorithm. They're 60 seconds or less, and you can use a lot of the different tools or videos you've already created and repurpose that. I'm not about just creating new video. I'm about repurposing because you spent so much time and energy already creating video. Why not make sure you get the most visibility from it, right? Not just the people who like that specific channel. So you can find out more about shorts here if you wanna screenshot that. I'll get out of the way and let me double check for questions real quick. Um, what's the difference as far as info that you put in the end screen versus a card? Oh, so the end screen could be a final call to action, Katrina, or a lot of times with the end screen, I like to just encourage them to go to another video. So for example, if you start with one video, then the next video I like to go to is why you even should care about being showing up in Google search. So that'll be the next video that I often recommend. I have a real flow and purpose to what I have next in my videos. You may do that too. Let's say you're promoting a, a product, you're, you're pro promoting this cup here, and then you want to talk, you have this great video about all the mishaps and um, problems people have had with lesser quality cups. So you're going to want that video to show up next. Okay. Now, if you want to learn how to create more video and really take the deeper dive, you can go to Creator Academy. This is a hundred percent free. It's got videos in there, tutorials, lots of help. If you really want to take that deep dive, 
I love video. I just know that I don't want to spend my life as a video editor. I've got a lot of other things to do. So while I know enough on what to make a decision and who to choose, I don't want to be the one deciding, okay, do I crop it here, crop it there? Because just some things like that take me hours where it takes a pro less than five minutes, okay? But if you want to learn more, this is where you can learn more at Creator Academy, and this is all updated by Google, so you'll get the latest information. Now, how you can promote your business with video. Now we are going to jump into a video, okay? So I'm just giving you fair warning. If the screen goes blank and you lose sound, you might need to go back to those original phone numbers I gave you. But I'm going to share with you a little bit about Tulane's closet. Let's bring them up. Sorry about the snorting. <laughs> Normally, after a surgical procedure, pets typically go home with what's called a cone or an e-collar. My name is Stephanie Seiberg, and I am the owner and developer of Tulane's Closet. When I was in veterinary medicine, I had a lot of clients come and ask if there was something else out there that they could use, and that's how it kind of got started. I had an idea. It's a one-piece post-surgical pet garment. The advantages of the Cover Me by Chewy is that they can eat, sleep a lot easier than wearing a cone. They can actually get through the doggy door. They can relax comfortably. Video can show people what it's made out of, how to put it on, how easy it is to use the potty cover. <laughs> YouTube, it's great for people that are just starting a new business or small business owners like myself because we're all on a budget. As you see that business is growing, you can always add to that at any time. We have doubled almost every year since we started in 2013. There's so many people now that really consider their pet their family and they want them to be comfortable. I think a lot of dogs are a lot happier right now. <laughs> Well, that's so cute. I love the little snorting. I hope you had a chance to hear that. Let me get here so I can get to my screen. So to advertise on YouTube, remember what I said, everything I'm talking about is for free except this portion, but I'll show you some of the free functionality you can use here. Just put my earbuds away. Um, so youtube.com slash ads, you're gonna be logged into your free Google account. You do need to decide if you do want to use YouTube ads, what's the format? Do you want more bite size? So those are bumper ads, six second ads that you can use as bumpers at the beginning or the end. You can also have the, the non-skippable in-stream ads. We've all seen those when we want to skip the ad, but we can't skip the ad because it's non-skippable. We have to watch it all the way through. You also have the outstream ads. So these are ads actually showing up when you're in the feed. You have video. Um, where you have video discovery ads that are also showing up there in the feed as you're looking for different topics. And then in-stream ads are where ads that show up in the video. So they actually at the beginning or they pop up during the video. Um, they, they irritate me, but they, I do know that they have a purpose. That's because I like to watch video all the way through and I don't like ads showing up inside. As much as I love marketing, I just don't like that. So what kind of format do you need? My favorite one actually is the bumper ad because it's the least expensive, but it's so effective. In six seconds, there's so much you can give there. But how to use that in a free version because you can put your logo there, you can get great brand recognition. There's a lot that can be said in six seconds. Put a timer to it and count it out. So what I like is the skippable in-stream ads because here's the thing why I like to use them. Because if somebody watches it a full 30 seconds, okay, so they watch it all the way through, that's when I pay per view. But until then, they have five seconds where they can skip. In those five seconds, I can put a logo, I can put all my information. Think of top of fold or not uh, the, the um, no, you know, no screen or no swiping. Um, so above the swipe. So you're not the first information, the most important information, put that out there first in the five seconds. And if they want to skip it, good to go. doesn't matter. I don't pay for it. At least they saw my brand. What's even better though, is that when you get this, when you get a skippable in-stream ad, you're only paying for people who actually watch, but even if they don't watch, look what's hanging over here on this right-hand side. There is a wonderful companion banner that hangs there 100% free. And if they only watch it for five seconds, 
I pay for none of that, but it's following them as they cruise along YouTube and do whatever searching that they want, giving me good brand recognition, some visibility. So that's what I like to use as far as functions and free um, areas of YouTube. And of course, there is YouTube ads where you do have to pay. So you can decide to do the longer ads or the in-stream ads where you really do want to tell a story. But again, think about what that story is and what you need to produce. Now, We've covered a lot of things and remember what I said about what is it that you can apply. I'd love to hear because knowledge is not powerful until it is applied. So how are you going to apply what you learned today? Let me know in the question box and I will give you a recap because the first thing to do is to create your channel. Think about your storyline, plan who is the star of your video. Now you can create and upload videos and then explore additional free resources available to you. Perhaps after today you realize I don't want to do this. I got plenty to do just taking care of customers. I don't want to do this, but I want ads. So you want to work with a professional. If you go to this URL, these are people who are already certified professionals and reach out to your Google partner because in your local community, you may have certified professionals. So help build local and buy in your own community. So look to them because they have the resources and they actually know who would be available. Who does this you could also learn a whole lot more in Google's YouTube channel so our grow Google YouTube channel you can find it right here the custom URL you're welcome to take a look at that and watch the videos plus remember in 24 hours you'll get a copy of this video and of course we have our career certificates where you might want to learn more about digital marketing and e-commerce I know I have our entire team doing that understand there are scholarships that are available till 2023 that you can do this and have Google pay for it not just for you but for all the team members in your business everybody there even family-owned business like I am so think about that as long as you have an EI number EIN number you could do this for everybody then of course you can always reach out to Google here but we've got a lot that we're going to cover here in boot camp because this is only day one so let me look at questions real real quick and then I will while I'm doing that let me actually give the shout out of who to reach to locally in your community if you've got other questions if you'd like to come to day two of boot camp and you've not registered then please do register but let's see I confess I need to completely remount my YouTube channel and account to maximize this oh absolutely I'm looking for you forward to you getting a copy too. Remember, it's tomorrow. So if it doesn't come tonight, I didn't forget you, but it is tomorrow that you'll get that. Mark, I'm going to make my channel look better and not just the latest video uploaded. Perfect. Oh, Mark, thank you. That's that's exactly if I've helped you in being able to do this in a way that makes sense to you and fits into your time schedule, then I've done my job, right? So this is our Google partners, the amazing ones who made sure I was here and made sure you were here too. If they can help you, they have access to the Google team, they have access to information, they have access to who in your local community could do this for you. So please reach out to them. And of course, we've got boot camp coming up. So tomorrow we're going to talk about how you can make your website work for you because that's your online property, everyone. And understand that if Google doesn't see it, then it cannot provide you in search results, which means you're not visible and people can't do business with you. And then of course, we're gonna talk about selling online with e-commerce. Now understand, e-commerce and websites, I have been heavily involved with for 13 years. So you are going to get much, much more than what even is on the slide. So I gave you a little bit more here on YouTube, but I'm gonna really just pour it on in these next two boot camp sessions. So I would love for you to be a part of it. Get with your Google partner who invited you so you can be a part of it. And now I am gonna to jump to questions. So let me go ahead and turn off the video.